I'm the rather schizophrenic Gemini. <laughs> Aquarius. Pisces. Astrology is so pervasive that just about everyone has been indoctrinated with the alleged character of their star sign. They're fiery, a bit unreliable, they love traveling, they're very expansive, they're quite spiritual. Loyal, um, spend too much money, a good leader. They can be a bit moody swinging one way and the other. They can be very bubbly one minute and then a bit down and you never know what you're going to get with them, my husband says. <laughs> A full quarter of the British population claim to believe in astrology. That's more than believe in any one of the gods touted by religions. Day in, day out, astrological horoscopes get far more newspaper column inches than science. Amusingly, it falls foul of our modern taboo against lazy stereotyping. How would we react if a newspaper published a daily column that read something like this? Germans, it is in your nature to be hard-working and methodical, which should serve you well at work today. In your personal relationships, especially this evening, you will need to curb your natural tendency to obey orders. Chinese, inscrutability has many advantages, but it may be your undoing today. British, your stiff upper lip may serve you well in business dealings, but try to relax and let yourself go in your social life. And so on through 12 national stereotypes. Of course, the astrology columns are not as offensive as that, but we should ask ourselves exactly where the difference lies. Both are guilty of facile discrimination, dividing humanity up into exclusive groups based on no evidence. So now I want to find out how those who trade in such irrational nonsense can possibly justify what they do. This is a map of the cosmos with London in the very center. I always thought that by the 21st century, science and reason would have long since cleaned up. And yet every day of the week, we're encouraged to retreat into the fog of the superstitious past. Astrology is a primitive belief system made into elaborate pseudoscience. It arrogantly makes humans the focal point of the universe. The movement of planets is supposed to signify petty developments in our career or love life. It was developed in the second century AD by the philosopher Claudius Ptolemy and has not moved on since, despite the discovery of new planets and despite a shift in the Earth's rotational axis that has thrown Ptolemy's zodiac out by 23 degrees. You could ask a question. You could say, who has stolen my money? Um, it never made sense when it was first invented, and it makes even less sense now. Read it off as though you mean they get it right. Do you think there's an actual physical influence of the planets that somehow beams down and influences us, uh, people? I think it's very hard to see that. I think if you try to understand astrology as a causal agent, right. I think that's hard to imagine how that would happen. I think you have to look at the planets as signifiers. When you look at the movement of Saturn around the zodiac, it's a very strong signifier of what's going on in individual lives. I don't even understand how they could possibly be signifiers. I mean, how, no. could, how could the rise of Saturn um, possibly be a signifier for something that's going on physiologically in a person's body. The position of planets in, in, in the signs of the work? zodiac. How would it work? This is what you keep coming back to ask me. How could it How possibly it work? work? Yes. And I've told you, I don't know. It's a deep, dark mystery. What isn't a deep, dark mystery is why the trite vagaries of newspaper horoscopes seem to chime with readers. Psychologists have identified what's known as the Barnum effect, whereby people tend to believe statements are accurate for them personally, when in fact they're general enough to apply to anyone. We could devise a little experiment where we take your forecasts and then uh, give some of them straight, give some of them randomized, sometimes give Virgo, the Pisces forecast, etc., and then ask people um, how accurate they were. Um, Yes, that would be a perverse I mean, thing to do, wouldn't it? It would be, it, yes, but I mean, isn't, wouldn't that be a good test? A test of what? 
Uh, well, how accurate you are. I think the, your intention there is mischief, and I think what you'd then get back was mischief. Okay. Yeah, well, my intention would not be mischief. My intention would be experimental test. Okay. Sci scientific test. Well, but even if it was mischief, how could that possibly influence it? I think it does influence it. I think when, whenever you do things with astrology, intentions are strong. I'd have thought you'd be eager. I mean, I'd, I'd have thought you'd be... Really, <laughs> see, what, the fact that you're not makes me think you don't really, in your heart of hearts, believe it. I don't think you, you, you really are prepared to put your reputation on the line. I just don't believe in the experiment, Richard. It's that simple. Well, you're in a kind of no-lose situation then, aren't you? Because, I hope so. Yeah. Regardless of Neil Spencer's concerns, I wanted to conduct a simple trial. We selected 20 people at random. We asked them to read that week's horoscope for Capricorn, but as a test, we said it applied to their own star sign. Not only do you have clever Mercury and ambitious Mars focusing on success, but now the sun is at the same pivotal mid-haven angle of your solar chart. I have no idea what that means. Put simply, this means that this is your moment to go that extra mile to become the person you dream of becoming. Remember, however, that there will be others who want what you have and will stop at nothing to get it. Astrologers say this should fit just Capricorn and not the rest. But what actually happened? Yeah, maybe. To be honest, I felt there's some Mercury energy this week because there's a lot of arguments around and a lot of bad vibes. Um, yeah, that, that, that kind of makes sense. What a lead well junk. It could apply to me as much as to the next person. Was it, yeah, well, in a way, yeah. I, I am, um, <laughs> uh, I'm going on a flamenco course in Spain. That isn't necessarily pertaining to me this week. It's pertaining to me generally. <laughs> the same number of people agreed that the horoscope was accurate for them as disagreed, and similar results are found with proper large-scale experiments. Technically, all but one of our group should have disagreed, namely our only Capricorn. Does it apply to you? Not at this moment, no. Am I taking this too seriously? I believe astrology misleads the public, denies scientific progress, and belittles our universe. There's a far richer way of looking at the cosmos. Astronomy is a triumph of the human intellect, a real science, constantly enriched by new evidence. Forget about the astrologers' charts with their constellations and planets moving in and out of this house or that house. Go into a real observatory and look at the Milky Way. Or go out into the country on a moonless night. Just lie on your back and gaze up at the stars.